Hi there, Doug Stuman with IT Creations with our second Gigabyte server review. And it too is a GPU server, but from the Intel side of the aisle. Today we'll look at the Gigabyte G481-S80. We already reviewed the Gigabyte G291-Z20 GPU server a few weeks back, offering a single AMD processor and up to eight double-wide full-length GPUs. This one sports dual Intel Xeon scalable processors and up to eight SXM2 form factor GPUs with NVLink. Let's take a look. First, the form factor. This is a 4U system with eight GPUs. That last Gigabyte server we did, the G291-Z20, also featured eight GPUs, but was 2U and used the standard PCI interface. Size aside, this system supports up to eight NVIDIA Tesla P100 or V100 SXM2 modules, which use an NVIDIA NVLink board to harness the full potential of GPU to GPU communications, with a theoretical communication speed somewhere between 300 and 500 gigabytes per second, compared to only 32 gigabytes per second using standard full height double width NVIDIA GPUs with a standard GPU to CPU connection. Anyways, those SXM2 modules are smaller and thinner than the standard form factor, so why is this system so big? Hopefully we'll answer this pressing question, but let's start with the front of the system, as usual. On the front of the chassis, there's a bank of 10 2.5 inch storage bays with six allocated for SAS and SATA storage, and the other four bays on the far right supporting up to four NVMe drives. Above that are ports for the crash card, including a VGA port, two USB 3.0 ports, an MLAN port, and two one gigabit ethernet ports. Adjacent to those ports are some of telltale lights and buttons, including the power on button, ID button, reset button, HDD status LED, non-maskable interrupt button, and a system status LED. A front accessible PCI 3.0 by 8 slot on the far left for an MD2 card can provide additional NVMe or SAS SATA storage, or can be used to support a RAID controller or network controller. Are you interested in this Gigabyte G481-S80 NVLinking Volta or Pascal GPU powered deep learning, machine learning, high performance computing Lamborghini of servers? If you are, then for a limited time, you could save up to $500 off the purchase price of a system listed on our site at $5,000 or more. Strange thing is, very few people have taken us up on this offer. Anyways, click that link to see pricing, and when you're ready to make a purchase, just mention this video. We'll even put it together for you. Give us a call. On the back of the system, you'll notice four PSUs lined up along the bottom of the chassis for redundancy. These are the big ones at 220 watts of 80 plus platinum power. Right next to the last PSU is a small hot swap pullout LAN module that features an integrated gigabit network port and a slot for an optional OCP card for other network connection speeds. Four low profile slots above the PSUs are for additional networking. If you want to get that most out of this system, you're probably going full 100 gigabit ethernet with InfiniBand by Mellanox. On a matter of note, Nvidia just purchased Mellanox, so I think we can safely assume this partnership will only lead to greater levels of performance. Five pairs of cutouts on the back panel are for adding a liquid cooling solution, which this system is designed for. Gigabyte has already partnered with Allied Control and 3M for a two-phase immersion cooling solution that will not only protect your hardware from overheating, but also significantly reduce energy consumption in the data center. Once you remove the cover panel, the interior is very neatly arranged. It's divided into two distinct areas separated by a bank of six dual high-performance 120 millimeter fan modules. Individual fan speed is adjusted automatically for the best cooling and power economy, but you can also manually create cooling profiles depending on your needs. You've got the CPU and memory modules on one side, along with the front storage section. On the other side, you have the NVLink board with four PEX PCI splitters, which process the data traffic to and from the CPUs, but also allow for more PCI lanes. Consider this platform can support eight SXM2 modules in each of the by 16 lanes, plus four more by 16 lanes for InfiniBand network controllers. And then there are two by eight slots, one at the front for an MD2 card, which is the SAS SATA RAID controller or something else, and then another for supporting the OCP LAN card in that hot plug module in back. So in total, we have up to 208 PCI lanes thanks to those PCI splitters. And actually, I forgot to add the NVMe drive connectors at two by eight for 16 more PCI lanes and four lanes per NVMe drive, bumping that total to 224 PCI lanes. There are two pairs of by 16 PCI 3.0 slots to support up to four Mellanox 100 gigabit ethernet connections. Those network cards are in turn connected with one of the CPUs and two of the XXM2 form factor GPUs through the NVLink board. This design facilitates unhindered peer-to-peer -peer communications and RDMA or remote direct memory access. With all the heat sinks set up on the NVLink board, it looks like a government sponsored high-rise housing project. And that is why the system is for you. Now, 
What are the advantages of N-Link over PCIe? Low latency and throughput. Compared to a PCIe-based GPU installation at up to 32 gigabytes per second, this one delivers 300 gigabytes per second, or almost a tenfold increase in data flow. But it's not just the NVLink board. Those SXM2 GPUs, in this case, Tesla V100 GPUs, also have six bi-directional NVLinks featuring 25 gigabytes per second per link in each direction. So communications between GPUs is super duper fast or significantly faster than what you can achieve with PCIe-based GPUs, which use the PCIe bus to communicate with other GPUs through the CPUs, adding more latency to the mix. Back to the first part, you'll see there are two sockets for the two second-generation Intel Xeon scalable processors up to 205 watts and 28 cores. Each processor also supports 12 memory module slots for a total of 24 active memory module slots with two processors installed. A memory status LED is on the system board, presumably for easy access. With second-generation CPUs, you do have options for more memory compared to their first-generation counterparts. That includes data-centric persistent memory modules, plus a few new processors with options for support of more memory, less power usage, and other features. This system will support registered memory modules up to 64 gigabytes or load-reduced memory modules up to 128 gigabytes at 2666 megahertz. In fact, this system will support up to 12 512 gigabyte DCPMM modules, but only with a complement of registered RDIM modules. The configuration includes a single RDIM and one DCPMM in each channel with the RDIM installed first. Mind you, the overview of the system said 512 gigabyte DCPMM supported, but the specs go back to 12 256 gigabyte, going with 512 gigabyte modules supported. And I based that on my desire to make it so. And if that is so, then that means like over six terabytes of DC persistent memory modules and an additional 768 gigabytes when you add in 12 64 gigabyte RDIMs for a total of almost seven terabytes. Although you will need the LCEFIC Xeon scalable CPUs, which can handle 4.5 terabytes of memory each, or just the M suffix if the top DC PMM memory module size is only 256 gigabytes. I do wonder if anybody ever loads these systems to capacity. Anybody? Just post it in the comment section below. Nobody will judge you. Although you will need a discrete RAID controller for SAS implementations or more control over your storage. For NVMe SSD support, the system comes with a virtual RAID on CPU key standard, which provides RAID options for the NVMe drives through the CPU's integrated volume management device. The key that comes with the system is limited to Intel SSDs. At chassis and remote management of the system is through the ASSpeed AST2500 controller module and dedicated management ports front and back on the system. The Gigabyte Server Manager, GSM, is Gigabyte's proprietary management software. You know, kind of like Dell's integrated Dell Remote Access Controller with Lifecycle Controller or integrated lights out on the HPE platforms. It's compatible with both the Integrated Platform Management Interface, IPMI, or Redfish RESTful API. Okay, so what do you get? Well, you get an intuitive browser user interface with remote management and monitoring of multiple Gigabyte servers through the base management controller in each chassis. The GSM agent is installed on each gig chassis and provides more granular data on each chassis, like temperature, power consumption, fan speed, RAID information, CPU usage rate. That can then be used by other GSM applications to allocate and manage resources. For management and integration of VMware vCenter, GSM plugin is available. There's also a mobile application for both Android and OS operating systems called, you guessed it, GSM Mobile. The best part about Gigabyte Proprietary Management Suite is there is no additional cost for remote access to the system like you might get, well, will get with other manufacturers. A short word on the GPUs. As I said earlier, those SXM2 GPUs are the bee's knees when it comes to performance. The system will accept both the NVIDIA Tesla P100 featuring Pascal architecture or the Tesla V100 featuring Volta architecture. Our system is outfitted with the NVIDIA Tesla V100 GPUs, both in SXM2 form factors. The V100 kicks ass over the P100 basically in all categories. It is quite literally three times faster than the Tesla P100. It's also available in a 16 gigabyte and 32 gigabyte version. The Tesla P100 and V100 have ECC memory, which is not something you would get on an implementation using the RTX and Titan versions. Also, no tensor cores or Volta architecture. So RTX also loses out on the coolness naming factor. I can't say the same for Titan. With no ECC, the system is unable to alert the user to single and double bit errors, which have the ability to drastically skew results for applications where you would use a high precision monstrosity like our unit here. The Gigabyte G481-S80 GPU server is not just fast, but stupid crazy fast. And for certain applications, it can replace multiple CPU servers running the same applications. 
Expensive, yes, but the advantages in time saved can far outweigh the initial expenditure. Hit that subscribe button along with a thumbs up if you liked our video. IT Creations carries this server and many others, and we can custom configure to your specifications. I mean, do you really want to be stuck putting all those GPUs and memory modules into this monster over the weekend? Think about that. I did place a few links in the description if you have any more questions. By the way, Serve the Home went in depth on P2P and RDMA using this specific server, so you might want to check that out. I left a link for you. I'm Doug Stewart with IT Creations, and thanks for watching. Stay safe and take care.